Prime Minister of Haiti, Ariel Henry, has resigned. That's according to the president of Guyana, Irfan Ali, who is the chairman of the Caribbean regional group, CARICOM. Henry has been in Puerto Rico since last week after gang leaders who have been dominating the capital, warned him against returning to Port-au-Prince. Leaders of the Caribbean bloc, CARICOM, have been meeting in Jamaica's capital to discuss uh, the political transition and the security crisis in Haiti. Let's bring in Al Jazeera's Teresa Bo on the phone now from Santo Domingo in a neighboring Dominican Republic. So what more are you hearing about uh, Ariel Henry's resignation, uh, Teresa? Was this expected? Well, certainly pressure on his has been mounting in the past few days. What we've seen is Prime Minister Ariel Henry at the time was not able to return to his country after traveling to Kenya to meet with president, uh, the Kenyan president and try to arrange the assistance uh, by an elite force to help uh, police officers in the country fight against the gangs that have taken controls of, of 80 percent, at least, of Haiti's capital back then. At the time, he was not allowed to land here in the Dominican Republic. He had to fly to Puerto Rico. He was declared a persona non grata. He was not welcome here in the Dominican Republic. And what we've been seeing is that even though the United States and other countries have been supporting him since he was um, he was designated prime minister. This happened after the assassination of former President Jovenel Moïse back in 2021. Many people in Haiti uh, did not want him to be in power, did not believe in his capacity of getting the country out of the current crisis. I just come from being at the border with Haiti, where thousands of people cross the border every day, and everyone we spoke to said that uh, Prime Minister Ari Henry, or now former Prime Minister, Henry uh, needs to resign because he's not the person that will be able to get out mm -hmm. the country out of the crisis. And as you were mentioning, you know, this happened just after a meeting of the Caribo, CARICOM of the Caribbean community happening in Jamaica. It happened just as the United States and the members of CARICOM expressed their concerns about the increasing insecurity of the crisis ongoing in Haiti, them already thinking of a transition government. Uh, they're referring to as a presidential college uh, that would be composed of political parties, of private sector, among others, to try to set up a transition mm. that at the same time will lead the country towards free and fair elections. So certainly there's a feeling that he had lost support not only of his people, but also of the international community. So in a way, his resignation does not come as a surprise. Right. So a resignation that doesn't come as a surprise. Uh, if you're joining us on Al Jazeera, breaking news, uh, the Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry, the embattled Haitian Prime Minister, has resigned this a day after a regional uh, meeting uh, in uh, uh, Jamaica, uh, during which U.S. Secretary of State uh, Teresa promised an additional $100 million for uh, a U.N.-backed force to stabilize Haiti. Uh, the, the international force for Haiti has been really at the center of this crisis. Uh, the, the gangs in, in Port-au-Prince opposed to an international force. What happens now as far as that is concerned? What could happen next? We're going to have to see what the reaction is in Port-au-Prince, uh, also what the gangs have to say. Let's not forget that they had already been warning that mm -hmm. if uh, Ariel Henry was allowed to return, this would trigger a civil war. We already saw uh, the leadership of the G9 Federation of Gangs, uh, G. Michel Sierre. He's also known as a barbecue. Uh, certain, for example, warning uh, hotel managers and hotel owners in Port-au-Prince of trying to give shelter to politicians close to Ariel and we that could be in hiding in many hotels in the in the capital of Haiti. So suddenly, you no, know, it, 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 it has an impact. You know, there's been lots of talks about the deployment of this multinational security support mission, which would be to give support to the Haitian National Police. There's been lots of talks in the past year about the deployment of this force that would let, be led by Kenya. 
This has not happened yet. There's been the United States announced that they're putting more money in to fund this whole operation, but nobody really knows when these police officers from Kenya are going to be in the ground. What we right. do know, for example, is that the Haitian National Police, the union, has been desperately requesting weapons, ammunition, bulletproof vests, because they're saying that they do not have the resources they need to fight against the gangs in Haiti. Right. And this, of course, uh, uh, Teresa, is not the first crisis Haiti is experiences, experiencing. Rather, Ariel Henry came to power after the assassination of the former president, Juvenal Moise. And before that, you had decades of uncertainty under, under previous leaders uh, of Haiti as well. How, why has this happened? What factors have contributed to this, in, to this continued instability in Haiti? Well, there is a long tradition in Haiti of, of politicians supporting gangs, of gangs being involved also in extortion, in politics and different things. But what we've seen is that since Jovenel Moise uh, was assassinated back in 2021, this is something that has increased. And what complicated the situation even more is that uh, Ariel Henry was not an elected official. He mm -hmm. was just handpicked at the time. And this is something that generated lots of resentment among the population, them saying that, you know, there that need to be elections in Haiti. There's been lots of calls for the past years that elections need to happen, that uh, Ariel Henry was an illegitimate uh, leader, that election, free and fair election need to happen in Haiti. However, the big challenge now is how to carry out those elections because of the insecurity crisis that exists in Haiti, because uh, the international community, but and, and of course, at the time, Ariel Henry were unable to control the gangs. Let me tell you, I was a year ago in Haiti, and mm. already gangs were controlling 80 percent of Haiti's capital. Already you would see armed gangs uh, you know, very close to the airport in different locations all around the capital with big, big fights happening at the time. And it's, it's been a year since there's been requests for this multinational force uh, to start operating Haiti, and this has not happened. So suddenly there's been an escalation mm. in the past few years. There's been an inability or an incapacity by the international community at the time to pressure Henry to call for elections. And what we're seeing now is Henry's resignation and suddenly the situation in Haiti almost spiraling out of control and at risk of civil war, which is what, at the time, the, 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 the CARICOM leadership is extremely concerned about. Teresa, thank you very much for that. Teresa Bo, live there on the line from the Dominican Republic. Again, if you're just joining us, the Haitian Prime Minister, the embattled Haitian Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, has resigned. Here now is Mariana Sanchez with a look at his political career. Anger and frustration marked the three years of Ariel Henry's tenure as Haiti's leader. The interim Prime Minister rose to power in 2021, weeks after President Jovenel Moïse was assassinated by a group of mercenaries. As a result, political groups agreed to a power-sharing deal that's set to expire this month. Henri took control of the government amidst a crippling economy and spiraling violence. In 2023, more than 4,000 Haitians were killed and another 3,000 kidnapped. In 2022, Henri survived an assassination attempt during a ceremony marking Haiti's independence. Henri promised to organize elections only after restoring security. Several conditions are necessary to organize the elections, to realize public consultations, and to adopt a new constitution. First, we have to tackle insecurity and arrest all terrorists who attack and kidnap children and adults. Many Haitians said the government was illegitimate. And some investigators believed Henri was involved in the assassination of Jovenel Moïse, which only added fuel to the turmoil in the streets. <laughs> Gangs set up roadblocks, prevented the distribution of fuel, and controlled nearly 80% of Port-au-Prince and other parts of the country. Thousands were displaced. Nearly half of the population lives under the poverty line. Haitians said Ariel Henry was unable to manage the crisis, one that it seems has no end.